here at the Columbus Catholic Schools, and uh, there's an event coming up. But uh, first, let's get a little information about you and uh, what you do to uh, set uh, certain events up. Yeah, hi, I'm Terry Wilczek. I'm a Columbus parent. So I have a son who just graduated from Columbus last year and two daughters who are currently students here. Um, we've been involved with Alpine Holiday for, I guess, more than 25 years since we moved to town. And I currently serve as a volunteer on the um, committee planning okay. Alpine Holiday. Yeah, so I just recently found out that this has been going on for, for 40 years. Let's talk about the uh, Alpine Holiday uh, fundraiser event and uh, how that's going to help uh, those here at the school. Yeah, Alpine has been going on for more than 40 years. It's a way for the community to come out and um, support the mission of Columbus Catholic Schools and you know help support our, our programs here. Um, and it's grown, obviously, over those 40 years and, and has had a lot of different things, but yeah. really has become a, an opportunity for people to come out, to have fun, um, to, to celebrate, uh, be together, eat some good food, see some entertainment, so lots of different things. Right. Uh, when, when does this take place? Alpine Holiday will be held November 11th and 12th, Friday evening and all day Saturday into Saturday evening. Okay. And um, is there a registration? you got to buy tickets to get in? Yeah, so just attendance is free. There's no okay. cost to participate to come. Um, and there's lots of different entertainment throughout the weekend. Um, Friday evening, we have Boogie and the Yo-Yos here. Oh, so there'll be great a chance to hear some good music. Um, there is a fish fry, so people can come and purchase uh, tickets for the fish fry. But there's, you know, food throughout the whole weekend. Um, Saturday, you can register for the Ugly Sweater Run. Get out oh, and geez. run in the morning. I, I got one of those at home. Yeah, hopefully. <laughs> and then uh, Saturday evening, there is a comedy show. Um, and so there are tickets required but there are tickets available yet for purchase for okay. that as well yeah and uh, with it being a fundraiser uh, how are those funds going to help uh, the students here in the school yeah um, so proceeds from Alpine holiday help us to continue to provide education to our students um, our schools are continuing to grow and um, we're really excited to have thriving programs so they help us with all of our educational needs um, athletic programs really um, all of the things that are happening here at Columbus sure uh, is there any other events that you want to add into this here. Yeah, um, well we also have our calendar raffle which has become one of the big um, sub, uh, big fundraising revenues. I'm going to start over on that okay, one again sure. and say that again, say that differently. Um, so we still have tickets available for the calendar raffle. Okay. Um, the grand prize is $10,000. Oh, um, so someone's going to leave with a really nice yeah. um, amount of cash right before Christmas um, but there are prizes given out for an entire month. Okay. Um, tickets are $20. Those are available in the office and um, all of the activities, the event schedule is on the Facebook page, on the Columbus Catholic website, or people can certainly contact Columbus Catholic Schools. Sure. All right. Well, thank you so much for letting us come down here and getting a little information on the uh, Alpine fundraising event here at uh, Columbus Catholic there. And I hope everyone comes down and has, uh, I don't know what the weather's going to be like, but it, at least it's all indoors. Yes, except for the sweater run. Yes, Everything sir. else would be indoors, indoors and you'd be dressed in your sweater anyway. Right. So it'll be warm. But yeah, we welcome the community to come out um, and look forward to um, great attendance for the weekend of Alpine Holiday. All right. Well, thank you so much for letting us come down here today. Thank you. All right. Today we're here at the Chestnut Center for the Arts and uh, Edie, we got more events coming up, uh, especially uh, the next one coming up is uh, the Tangled Art. Uh, can we talk about that and then we'll talk about uh, the new exhibit that's going yes, on. Yes, yes. The Tangled Art class is Sunday, November 13th and it's a family type activity. Um, you're going to get to do some doodling and we all doodle. Mm -hmm. Everybody doodles when they're on the phone or doing things at the computer, but you're going to learn some good art skills with doodling and you can make an actual art piece with it. Okay. So we call it, it's a, the commercial name is Tangled Art, but if you go online you can see some pretty amazing things. So you're going to learn some three-dimensional kinds of techniques and, and a lot of fun things and come away with a really nice art piece. Yeah, and is that... Uh like with string or is it uh, no, it's drawing with drawing, pen drawing with pen, okay. pen mostly black and white but you can throw a little color in there just to add to it and you can use an initial you can use uh, a picture in the middle and then you expand off of that okay and it's very exciting yeah and if uh, some is there still time to register to sign up for that absolutely you can go online and register through chestnut center www.chestnutarts.org you can call us at our office 715-389-8999 or email us. 
All right, that sounds wonderful. Now we have, you have a, an, an art exhibit yes, go, we do. going on now? Yes, well, it's just starting Which tomorrow started. evening. Mm -hmm. okay. One more class I want to point out is November 21st on a Monday evening, uh, an adult class, and it's called Collage. And uh, collages are very cool now. You can make bulletin boards, you can make small ones, you can make shadow boxes with little items that you pick up on trips or things with your family, mementos, and you don't, just don't know how to display them. Okay. So our, our teacher is Connie Hearsma, and she is very good at this. She's a scrapbooker, a teacher of that, and she has many materials that can help. Bring your favorite pictures, bring some mementos, bring some little things that kind of tie it in. Yeah. Great for a gift. It'll be November 21st, Monday evening. Oh, well, that sounds wonderful, and to yeah. make a nice little uh, keepsake, yes. or keepsake, if you would say there. Of, yes. Um, something special that you want right, to right and a way to display it where you know those digital photos you oh, never use yeah i know <laughs> you don't have to put batteries in this here so it's always on so. exactly right so um talking about uh something that doesn't need electricity you got a art exhibit yes we do with, uh, great photography yes this is anthony scott He's a gentleman who's been living in Marshfield for many years, but he's from the British Isles, okay. uh, from the, uh, England, and I'm not sure if he's Ireland or, or British Isles somehow. Anyway, he's, uh, he brought photos that he's taken of Wisconsin, and he said in, in Britain, uh, walking trails and, and pathways, not hiking for, for physical purposes, but to enjoy nature. And so he's taken some amazing photographs of local areas and maybe Wisconsin Dells and Stevens Point and things. And so um, as you come into the gallery, what you would see is if you were there, it felt like you're really in that location and it kind of takes you back. Sure. And um, did he come here to uh, Marshfield here to put this exhibit on or? No, they live in Marshfield. His wife is okay. Pat Stir, and she's been a professor at the university as was Tony. And, the, and they're both retired, um, but he's got a very much passion for photography and he's really got an eye for it. Okay. And they're all for sale. All, all these pieces are for sale. And this runs till when? Uh, we run this exhibit from Thursday the 3rd through November 30th. So even after Thanksgiving, through that week, we will have the exhibit up. Right. And uh, come and get some relaxation and, and without having to put your walking shoes on. <laughs> right. Yeah, there's there's a lot to see here and uh, very uh, interesting of uh, all the the talent that uh, everyone in the community has to put forth and to yes. uh, displaying it with the rest of the community. That's right. Yeah, all right. we're very excited. All right. Well, thank you so much for letting us stop by and we'll be back again because there's always something new going on mm -hmm. here. So, uh, Edie, thank you so much for letting us come down. You're welcome. Yes. Welcome back. We're here at the Marshfield Area Pet Shelter. And uh, give us your name and, and what you do here before we talk about your event that's coming up. My name is Karen Rao. I am the executive director here at the Marshfield Area Pet Shelter. And um, we're down here because you got a, an event coming up here real shortly here called A Paws and Pancakes. Uh, tell us all about it and how it's going to help uh, the animals in the shelter here. So, uh, yes, this is going to be the 11th time that we've hosted our Paws and Pancakes Breakfast Fundraiser. This year it's going to be at Hotel Marshfield. It's from 8 to 11.30 on November 6th. Um, we have a bu breakfast buffet that everybody can enjoy. Then we have over 30 raffle baskets, a couple of 50-50 raffles, other fun opportunities to help raise money for our animals at the pet shelter. Sure, and does anybody have to, to register to be part of the breakfast, or you just uh, first come, first serve? Yep, it's tickets are sold at the door okay. for the breakfast. Um, we usually, in the past, have had between 800 and 1,000 people come. Oh, boy. Yeah, so it's a pretty popular event. I know everybody likes to come out and support us that way, and everybody can do their part by um, coming and having a good breakfast and, and purchasing the tickets for our raffles. That's how we generate money for our um, daily operations here. Um, in addition to this breakfast, you know, the important piece of these fundraisers is to get sponsors. And so we have many generous sponsors that are also contributing to the pro proceeds for this for this event. Sure, and that, that <clears throat> helps, like you say, uh, raise money for 
uh, the utilities, food, supplies, and, and employees, and employees salaries, and yeah. salaries and stuff like that. Um, talking about uh, additional help, uh, you're always welcome um, donations outside of the event. Uh, what are items that you're always looking for or always in need of here at the? Uh, well, you know, we're, we're usually in pretty good shape with supplies. I'm not afraid to tell people that we need money. We just need money all year round. The vet expenses are really high. The medical supplies, the medicine for the animals is really high. Like you mentioned, the utilities, uh, those are really high. Um, we have air circulating all the time here, and so that you know, makes our utilities higher because of that fresh air coming into the building right. all the time to keep it fresh and smelling good. Uh, so, uh, and then the employee salaries, there's four salaries that are being paid through that. So we're not afraid to say that we need money. Um, we do get a huge donation from Festival Foods four times a year with their Paw Away Hunger campaign or program. Um, and that's a, you know, it's $4,000 worth of supplies that we get from them. Uh, the other thing is that our Facebook following is amazing we have over 11,000 people on our Facebook page and when we need donations or anything we put it on our Facebook page and our fans really deliver for us so right. and if somebody wants to um, find you on Facebook how do they do that Marshall area pet shelter okay mm -hmm. and um, if somebody wanted to I mean the non-employee if somebody wanted to help volunteer some time can an individual do that here so right now we have four staff members like I mentioned we have around 40 volunteers part of that 40 volunteers is the opportunity development center folks who come okay. in three days a week uh, they do our laundry our dishes scrub our floors empty our garbage so they do a huge piece of work that way the other volunteers that come in they come in in the morning and in the evening to do mainly cat care because that's the majority of the animals that we have here so um, we do we do not have volunteer opportunities on our website but if people want to email us and want us to send them our volunteer app we are happy to do that for when positions do open up okay and um, you said you do have a, a lot of cats here um, how does one go about to requesting uh, the adoption process here? How does that work? So ever since the pandemic, we did learn that by appointment only is um, really beneficial for us as a small staff. So um, we do require an application to be sent to us. All our pets are listed on our website so they can see our, their pictures, some videos are out there of our pets, and then apply to adopt. We'll get a hold of people, schedule an appointment to come in and meet not only the pet that they're applying for but they are welcome to you know visit with all the kitties here or the doggies if we have them sure and um, is there uh, foster opportunities say like if somebody wanted to foster for a few weeks uh, does that uh, do you do that here we do um, we do have a foster program for our kittens so that there's that program where the um, foster families take the kittens home until they're big enough to come back for surgery but the other foster piece of this is that we do offer foster to adopt if people are interested in a particular um, pet um, it is not something we routinely do it, it okay. all depends upon the circumstances sure. in the home but we do offer a foster to adopt uh, miss kitty behind us here she's a senior she oh. lady back she's going to a foster to adopt the sit this afternoon Aww. so the situation at home is that they have two other senior kitties and so we're going to give them the opportunity to take miss kitty home okay. and see how she does with their two kitties before sure. they obligate themselves to adoption so it all depends upon the situation at their home sure well i like to say thank you so much for uh, letting us come down here and get a little information about the event that they're hold you're holding and uh and hopefully then uh, there's a good turnout like always there and then we get the much needed support so uh, thank you so much for having us down here yeah thank you for coming